If you compete in open or limited division in USPSA, there's a good chance you've already got a double alpha holster because at 2020 nationals, the double alpha holster represented 44% of open holsters and 35% of limited holsters. And the Alpha X holster represents the latest thinking of Saul Kirsch at DAA on how to secure a race gun. I'm David with the Humble Marksman channel. Are you ready? Stand by. Overseas in IPSC, all the divisions can use locking race holsters, but in USPSA currently, and that's as of second quarter 2021, only limited and open divisions can use locking race holsters. The Alpha X is Devil Alpha Academy's flagship locking race holster. It is aluminum body, it has interchangeable holster blocks, and the hanger is aluminum secured on a ball joint, and it securely locks the gun into the holster so that it really secures your investment. And I say that because if you compete in limited or open division, you probably have a multi-thousand dollar gun hanging out of the holster. And the locking mechanism on the Alpha X is squared away. There's just this little lever right here. So with the lever, how they have it situated with the lever pointing out like this, it means the holster is locked. And when it is up, that means the holster is unlocked and the gun will lift straight out and basically straight up. Most people are familiar with Double Alpha Academy because their gear is so prevalent on the range, but Double Alpha Academy started as Saul Kirsch. Saul Kirsch was a world-class competitor and he topped out at like fifth in the 2002 World Shoot in Open Division. He was an industrial engineer by training and so he started up the company that is Delta Alpha Academy or more commonly DAA. So you've probably seen the stuff hanging around on the range. You've seen their Avengers logo that they have. It's very iconic, looks awesome. But DAA is a company of about 15 based out of the Netherlands. They've got a US USA distributor set up in the form of Alpha Dynamics. So the Alpha X is one of the more expensive options in the segment, but it has some pretty amazing features that we'll get into here shortly, but it comes in at about $225. We'll start with how the holster mounts onto the belt and work out from there. So much like the XIP pouches, which I have another video on, you can see the card and click on right there. It is secured to the belt by two of these little metal straps, which does not affect the bind of your inner and outer belt at all. It's a really great way to mount stuff on the belt. I will say these screws did work their way out when I was reviewing the holster, like just going from practice to my car, to my garage for dry fire, back and forth. Uh, something about how the belt wants to curve on its own, just force the screws to kind of back out. And I actually lost the little metal rod. So use blue Loctite. I actually was in a good position because I was able to scavenge some parts from an old racer pouch I had that broke. So we're still up and running, no problem. So obviously I tested the holster with the Bull Armory Ultimate Racer. But we'll get that out of the way so you can see the holster a little bit better. So the mount on the belt is pretty cool because there is one bolt right here. And if you loosen this bolt, you can take the whole holster body off the bracket. So if you're like flying to matches or something like that, that allows you to take the holster off the belt so you can make the belt very small to fit in like an airline bag which is a really forward thinking design because trying to fit these stupid belts into your airline bag is always a struggle. And the fact that they allow you to break it down into the smallest components is awesome. One nice feature of how the hanger actually works for the double alpha, you can see that my holster actually kind of points up and in like that. And that's because with the gun in, it kind of bends like that. But there's no thigh pad that pushes into you, although it is available for purchase if you like that feature. They've got a thigh pad that will mount right there onto the bracket but it doesn't prevent mobility and it allows you to get into your right front pocket, which is nice. And while the holster is adjustable in like basically any direction, like I'm talking, you can tilt it in, you can tilt it out, you can tilt it all kinds of different ways, however you want, because it's just like a trailer hitch sticking off a bracket that a female thing comes on and bites onto. And that's the really scientific term of how the holster works. I'm sure uh, Saul is agreeing with me with really good explaining there. So if you loosen the bolt right there, you can slide the actual holster itself up and down on the ball joint and then tighten it down and it expands in the dovetail and locks it into positions and it's rock solid. So the, the actual mechanism itself is very, very robust. And most importantly, 
Like this is how you know it was designed by an engineer who actually uses the stuff and isn't just building to a price point. Like the wrenches that come with this are hands down the best wrenches that I've gotten. And if you have all of this kind of practical gear, you know that from time to time you have to wrench on it a little bit. It comes with three ball head Allen keys, which are the best Allen keys. You're less likely to strip them and you don't have to be like straight on the actual head itself in order to make an adjustment. But the wrench that's used to lock down the ball joint right here comes with this big robust handle. So since it has a handle on it, you can really crank down the torque and get this thing locked in so it is just super, super steady. If you're going to compete with this thing and use it for multiple guns, the good news is that you just have to buy a new insert and the inserts are only like $45. So you can actually just loosen these two bolts back here and the little block will lift up out of the holster body. And it's the same insert used in the old Racemaster holsters. Uh, as long as you have a magnetic insert, it will work on this holster as well. And you can see right there on the holster that it actually says on the block what the insert is for. Now, I reviewed the holster on the Double Alpha Premium Belt. This is the Rambo edition of the belt, complete with the red, white, and blue XIP mag pouches. This belt freedoms harder than any other belt in the nation. And a true story is when I posted a picture of this belt on Instagram, Lee Greenwood got in touch and we're working on a sequel to Proud to be an American. But the Double Alpha Premium Belt Rambo Edition, that's not really what it's called, uh, the belt is like super, super stiff. If DAA doesn't make the stiffest outer belts, uh, they've got to be really close because I mean this thing, like, it doesn't flex at all. It doesn't flex under its own weight. It's just a really, really immense belt. This holster has one of the smoothest releases, if not the smoothest release, as far as when the lock is disengaged and presenting the gun to target, like it just flies at the target very, very smoothly. The amount of travel of the gun up before you can start presenting for it is fairly minimal, but it is enough that you won't have issues with like doing turn and draws and accidentally pitching the gun forward or anything crazy like that. However, it does let go of the gun fast enough that if you say, don't lock the gun in the holster and bend over to tie your shoe, which is what I did, the gun will fall out. Now the gun was unloaded at the time and the gun and the belt are both fine. I'm still recovering emotionally, but you know, that's another story. It's not fun when your race gun hits the ground. You have to be like, oh, is the optic broken? And like the optic didn't break, but uh, yeah, it shook me up. So if you've got the discipline to remember to lock the gun in the holster between reps, you're not gonna have an issue with it. Just like if you're not getting ready to draw again, just make sure the lock is engaged. And it, the nice thing about the DAA design on the lock, trigger guard lock is that as you're going to kind of build the master grip, you can flick it off as well. Now the little lever itself is this kind of like knurled aluminum sort of thing. So if you made it a habit of drawing like that, it probably would chew up your finger a lot, but let's be honest for IPSC and USPSA, Generally, you're always going to draw with the holster unlocked because, I mean, it's designed for pistol game. So as far as the length of travel of up before you can go forward, I think DAA really did kind of nail the formula and it is about as optimized as it can be for like super fast draws to the target. Now, out of all that dry fire and stuff like that, I never had any issues with the holster getting out of adjustment. Like once I got it set up on my belt and it only took about 10 minutes or so to get it set up. Some holsters take a lot longer, but if you think about the amount of adjustments you have to do on the thing, like you've got four screws to secure it at the belt, you've got one to lock in the ball joint, and you've got one to adjust the up down height on the thing and it's done. Like It's really, really easy to get mounted on the belt and get adjusted, which is always a nice feature because getting some of the gear fixed on the belt takes an eternity and just the ease of which this gets set up on the belt is a very welcome feature. I will say that if I had to give it negatives, and this is more shame on me than it is negatives, I did have two of these screws back out when they weren't Loctited, which was annoying. And similarly, these two screws that hold the block in did start to work their way out. So if you know you aren't gonna be changing it, just use like a 242 thread locker or something like that, just to make sure that these screws don't work their way out and find their way into the trunk of your car to never be found again. So use Loctite. Moral of the story, don't lock tight the things that you need to adjust like the ball joint or the sliding and dovetail to change the height. But as far as securing the block into the holster and the holster onto the belt, those are prime candidates for some Loctite. So that brings us to the whole like, is it worth what they're asking for it? I mean, this is the high-end flagship model offered from DAA. If you want a race holster that isn't going to break the bank, you can save 75 bucks and get their Racer X. 
is their current thinking and the big difference is the holster body is plastic. It doesn't have interchangeable blocks so that if you wanted to change guns on that holster, you'd have to buy a whole new holster. Whereas with this one, you just have to buy a new block, which is only $45. So if you've got two guns that you want to set up to compete with, then this one makes a lot of sense. Since it's made out of premium materials, since it is all aluminum, like this is the only all aluminum holster in a sea of plastic race holsters. So it has a heft and a presence that uh, some of the other products don't necessarily have. And as a result, like this is probably one of the, if not the most popular holster in open division. Like as I mentioned in the intro, it's not even close as far as other brands of holsters and the Double Alpha Racer X in open division. Having a holster that you can break down to fly to serious matches like Nationals say, uh, that's a great feature to have. Very few other holsters have that capability right out of the box. The wrenches that it comes with are significantly nicer than the wrenches any other holster comes with. And because they are longer handled wrenches, it they'd stand out in your range bag apart from all the other cheap Allen keys that you have there. So they're really premium wrenches and it's just, it goes to show that an engineer who understands the game and what it's like to actually be a competitor kind of put the whole package together. So very much in the same way that you get a premium product like an Apple laptop or something like that. Like when you open the box, you kind of feel special that all the little details are sort of worked out. Like that's very much the way the experience is with the Alpha X holster. That said, it doesn't have a muzzle support, but you can get one if you want one. They sell it for like another 20 bucks. There's a threaded hole right there where you can get a muzzle support to support like an open gun. If that's the style of holster that you like, then you can make the Alpha X into that as well. So having looked at most of the race holsters in the market at this point, I can say that like, yes, it absolutely commands the price that they are asking for it. Uh, just from the craftsmanship, the wrenches, the way it's adjustable and how it interfaces with the thing on the belt and the fact that it breaks down like, yeah, those are all super premium features. And so yes, it absolutely commands what they're asking for it. So if you compete with a Double Alpha Racer X or the Alpha X holster, please leave a comment below share your experience of what shooting this has been like. Now, I've only been using this for about five weeks, so you guys who've been using these for literal years, please chime in and let people know what your experience with the holsters has been like. If you've made it this far, please go ahead and hit that like button before signing off. It lets YouTube know that I'm doing a good job and you appreciate the content. And if you've made it this far, consider watching this review of the XIP pouches or this video that YouTube has chosen for you. I appreciate you guys. Catch you on the next one.